ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਚੜ੍ਹਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਟੀਵੀ ਵੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਨਾਰਥ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਹਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਮਨਦੀਪ ਕੌਰ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਤੇ ਖਬਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂਆਤ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਮਾਰ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਸੁਰਖੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਓਨਟਾਰੀਓ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਨੇ ਅਜੈਕਸ ਵਿਖੇ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਕੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਐਲਾਨੇ ਫੰਡਾਂ ਦੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਦੇ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਨਾਲ ਹੋਏ ਸਮਝੌਤੇ ਤਹਿਤ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ 7 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਵਿਖੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਵਿਭਾਗ ਦੇ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਮੈਕੀਨਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਚਾਰ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਜ਼ਿਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟਾਂ ਲਈ ਐਲਾਨੇ 45.3 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਟ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਪ੍ਰਭਮਿਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਸਰਕਾਰੀਆ ਨੇ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਇਨਫਰਾਸਟ੍ਰਕਚਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਤਹਿਤ ਲਿਆਂਦੇ ਚਾਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਖਰੀਦੀਆਂ ਜਾਣਗੀਆਂ 32 ਨਵੀਆਂ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰਿਕ ਬੱਸਾਂ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਵਿੱਚ 37.8 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਦਾ ਪਾਏਗੀ ਹਿੱਸਾ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਰੋਨਾ ਦੇ ਕਾਰਨ ਮਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਹੋਈ 1.5 ਲੱਖ ਤੋਂ ਪਾਰ ਪੀੜਤਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਦਾ ਅੰਕੜਾ ਹੋਇਆ 45 ਲੱਖ ਤੋਂ ਪਾਰ 22 ਲੱਖ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਲੋਕ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਖਬਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਵਿਸਥਾਰ ਓਨਟਾਰੀਓ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਡਗ ਫੋਰਡ ਅਜੈਕਸ ਵਿਖੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਡਾਰਮ ਰੀਜ਼ਨ ਲਈ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਐਲਾਨੇ ਫੰਡਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੋਏ ਸਮਝੌਤੇ ਤਹਿਤ 7 ਬਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਿੰਸ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਤ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਜਿਸ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ 4 ਬਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਮਿਊਨਿਸਪੈਲਟੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਰਥਚਾਰਾ ਮੁੜ ਖੋਲਣ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਸਹਾਈ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਨੇ ਤਮਾਮ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੇਅਰ ਅਤੇ ਫਰੰਟ ਲਾਈਨ ਵਰਕਰਾਂ ਦਾ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਵੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਟੁਡੇਸ ਹਿਸਟੋਰਿਕ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਮੈਂਟ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਗੈਟਿੰਗ ਰਿਜ਼ਲਟਸ all across durham my government is making investments in the region's future investments like doubling the size of bowmanville hospital with a new patient tower emergency room a new emergency room a new critical care and inpatient units we're adding 15 more midday go trips and delivering two way all day service every 15 minutes along the lake shore east go rail line this is great news for durham region and we couldn't do it without the help of our municipal partners my friends we recently secured a 4 billion dollar deal from the federal investment for ontario municipalities this money will support shelters food banks public health and transit right here in durham and across ontario is just absolutely incredible and we did it working hand in hand with our municipal partners they had our back during these critical negotiations so i thank you for joining us today we have ajax mayor collier durham region chair john henry uxbridge mayor barton mayor barton and brock mayor bath hadden oshawa deputy mayor bob chapman bob you're an absolute champion and i know i know pickering mayor dave ryan just had surgery and couldn't be with us we wish him a very speedy recovery and thank you deputy mayor ash for being with us at today's uh event in place of dave i also want to recognize the team here at lake ridge health all the heroic nurses doctors personal support workers and hospital staff thank you for going above and beyond to support orchard villa and many other long term care homes in the area ਇਨਫਰਾਸਟ੍ਰਕਚਰ ਅਤੇ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਵਿਭਾਗ ਦੀ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਮੈਕੈਨਾ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਵਿਖੇ ਪਹੁੰਚੀ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਚਾਰ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਜ਼ਿਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟਸ ਦੇ ਲਈ 45.3 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਐਲਾਨੇ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਤਹਿਤ ਨਵੀਆਂ ਬੱਸਾਂ ਖਰੀਦੀਆਂ ਜਾਣਗੀਆਂ ਅਤੇ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਜ਼ਿਟ ਹੱਬ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਜਾਵੇਗਾ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਦੇ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਵੀਆਂ ਨੌਕਰੀਆਂ ਵੀ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੋਣਗੀਆਂ ਮੈਕੈਨਾ ਦੇ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਬ੍ਰੈਂਪਟਨ ਦੇ ਬੁਨਿਆਦੀ ਢਾਂਚੇ ਨੂੰ ਮਜ਼ਬੂਤ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਲਗਾਤਾਰ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਅਤੇ ਅਫੋਰਡੇਬਲ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਵੱਡਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਫੈਡਰਲ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ uh to help with the costs associated with covid-19 the lost revenues and also to making sure that we keep our uh public transit safe um we've also invested in the gas tax so that's money that goes towards infrastructure projects and of course it was just a year ago that i was here doing an electric bus announcement and we need to be thinking about the future we need folks to be able to get around in faster ways so they can get home to see their kids so they can get to work uh in more affordable ways public transit is an affordable option and in some for some people the only
creating a transit hub, more safety equipment. Yay, that's a great announcement. And, and why does this matter? Because, as I said, public transit allows Canadians, it allows the residents of Brampton to get around in faster, cheaper, and cleaner ways. That this investment will improve the lives of Brampton residents. Public transit helps get cars off the roads. We're electrifying the transit system here, which is amazing. Uh, it also creates jobs. Jobs right here in Brampton. Uh, and jobs across the country. And we need to be focusing on the future. While it is extremely hard right now, we will get through this. We will, we are strong, we are Canadians, and we are united. But we need to be continually to, continuing to build the future we want. I have a lot more to say here, but I will cut it short because I know we have uh, a lot <laughs> more speakers. But I just uh, I want to recognize that there are other opportunities going forward, that we will continue to invest in Brampton to build infrastructure like public transit, like wastewater, like affordable housing, because that matters to residents. That is quite frankly why I got into politics. I know that is why all my colleagues got into politics, because they care about improving the lives of people. That is what we are focused on. That is what we will continue to do and we will continue to do it together. Ontario the Associate Minister of Small Business at the Red Tape Reduction Pramit Singh Sarkaria ne dasya hai ki transit naal sambandhit chare project Canada Infrastructure Program de tehat lende gaye ne jis de tehat 32 naviyan electric bussan khareediyan jaan giyan ate public transit system vich vi sudhar kite jaan ge. Is de naal musafiran ate operatoran di suraksha vi vadhegi. Provincial sarkar is project vich 37.8 million dollar da hissa payegi. Today's announcement is great news for Brampton and thousands of commuters that travel in, out, and across our vibrant city each and every single day. Last summer, after careful review, we nominated these four public transit projects to the federal government for funding under the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, more commonly known as ICIP. Today, we're celebrating the approval of these projects that will renew and enhance Brampton and improve the quality of life of the residents in the entire region. The projects we are celebrating here today include the purchase of 32 new buses to replace existing vehicles in the fleet. With today's announcement, Brampton will also be able to refurbish 300 existing conventional buses extending the useful life of the vehicles and improving the capacity and quality of the overall public transit system in the city. The purchase of newer technologies for the entire bus fleet will provide increased safety for users and operators of public transit. Lastly, funding today will also support a new transit hub, increasing the number of bus bays in the existing terminal from 7 to 16, doubling the number of trips that currently service the terminal. The hub will also be future-proofed for a possible switch to electric buses and will feature new bus canopies, an inside waiting area, and concessions. Building a modern, effective, and efficient trans transit system for hardworking Brampton families has been a priority of mine, my colleague Amarjil Sandhu, and this government from day one. And these enhancements will greatly improve access to Brampton's public transit system for residents and for years to come. I know that this provincial funding of more than $37 million will help make life easier for Bramptonians, getting people where they need to be and go and how and when they want to get there. And I'm proud to be a part of a government that has committed over $7.3 billion in transit infrastructures over 10 years in the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. We can all agree that moving people to jobs and goods to market is a critical piece of our community's economic growth and recovery, especially after COVID-19. That is also why our government worked with our federal partners to secure $2 billion to help Ontario municipalities 
keep their transit systems running and relieve financial pressures created by COVID-19. This funding is a partnership part of $4 billion in federal and municipal, federal and provincial assistance to municipalities secured as part of the safe restart agreement to provide the support they need. Brampton West to MP Kamal Khaira ne kaya hai ki COVID-19 ne Canadian di sehat de naal naal aarthikta nu vi satt mari hai te federal sarkar lokan di sehat layi lagatar kadam chuk rahi hai jinna transit project nu shehar layi aham vi dassya kabile gaur hai ki chare transit project layi kul 113 million dollar di investment kiti gayi hai is de layi federal sarkar 45.3 million ate provincial sarkar 37.8 million ate Brampton City Council te 2 million dollar payegi Brampton West and I'm pleased to join by my outstanding colleagues and our team Brampton, your local Member of Parliament, Ruby Sahoda, Member of Parliament from Brampton North, Sonia Sadhu, Member of Parliament from Brampton South, Maninder Sadhu, Member of Parliament from Brampton East, and Ramesh Sangha, Member of Parliament from Brampton Center. It is also great to see our provincial counterparts and of course our terrific Mayor, Mayor Brown. Thank you for being here. I am extremely pleased to join you for today's announcements, which I know will make a real difference in the lives of Brampton residents. We have faced unprecedented challenges together during this COVID pandemic. The pandemic hasn't just affected the health of Canadians, but it also has profound impact on the economy. And that's why from the very beginning, our government has been taking decisive actions to support families, to support businesses, and our communities like Brampton, and continues to look ahead and see what more we can do. Strategic investments in public transit are critical in building communities where residents of Brampton can thrive. Efficient public transit helps people get to where they need to go and access essential services. And today's announcement will make Brampton public transit more sustainable and convenient for users. So to tell you more, I would like to extend a warm welcome to our outstanding Minister of Infrastructure and Communities, the Honorable Catherine McKenna, whom my colleagues and I have had the pleasure of working with on many projects. In fact, it was probably maybe just over a year ago that she was right here uh, in Brampton West at the Sandalwood facility where our government announced uh, funding, federal funding for electric buses right here in our community. Brampton the Mayor Patrick Brown has said that in the last 10 years, the most big investment of the federal government has been done in this country. He said that Brampton, Canada, the most strong and strong city is where people come and come. That's why the transit center is necessary to be able to come. Mayor said that the transit center is necessary to be able to come to the green city. सिस्टम बेहतर किया जावे ताजो लोग पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट दी लोग वादू वर्तो कर। सिटी ऑफ ब्रैम्पटन, सो द मोर ऑफ्टन वी कैन हैव हर कम हियर, प्लीज डू। एंड आई हैव टू सेइ दैट अनाउंसमेंट लास्ट ईयर वाज वाज वंडरफुल एंड आई थिंक इट्स अ स्टार्ट ऑफ व्हाट्स गोइंग टू बी अ कैनेडियन सक्सेस स्टोरी इन the transit hub can turn uh, very quickly, transition to electrification. Everything we're doing right now is to make sure that we can have that type of a modern transit system, and we know that you get that. Friends, it's great to have you all here, um, and I know that this announcement was important to the Prime Minister and the Premier uh, as well. Uh, this is a very significant investment in our community. Uh, Today's announcement is the largest federal investment in, in the city's transit system in more than 10 years uh, in terms of uh, uh, Zoom buses. So that's, that's quite significant, the largest investment in 10 years uh, from the federal government and to the provincial government, uh, quite a significant investment as well, $45 million and $37 million respectfully. That is uh, great news for the city of Brampton. So I know I um, petition you often, I'm on your... Uh, Heels often asking for help, but, but today is a good news day for the city of Brampton. Uh, um, very significant, and it's needed. It, it is needed. Uh, let, me, let me just say this. Um, because of our density, and we know, you know, Prabhupit said there's nowhere he'd rather live um, and raise a family and work than Brampton. Well, many people feel that. We're the fastest growing big city in Canada. People come here because it's a beautiful community. And with that, with that increased density, that increased population, we actually have the fastest growing transit system uh, in terms of ridership as a percentage in all of the, uh, the GTA in Canada. We've had a, our ridership has grown 153%. Think about that, and Alex, your team, and I know Frank Vanny from the ATU is here too, our transit operators, our heroes, 153%, you know, that's something I want to celebrate. 
And transit's critical. It's not just to, to get to work um, or to go to school or carry on your day-to-day -day activities. It, it's, it's part of our climate change goals uh, as a city and as a country. Transit's going to be integral to that. And, you know, Brampton Council joined 35 other municipalities declaring a climate emergency. It's one thing to declare an emergency, but it's another thing to take the tangible actions to actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions. And with a modern transit system, you can do that. And the investments today are going to help us. It's going to be an important first step. As part of our vision for a healthy and green city, we are committed to promoting transit usage and provide high quality service that reduces the city's overall carbon footprint. The investment today will go directly towards our community and its future, and it is seen by our council as the first significant step in addressing underfunding that we faced over the last 10 years. Canada the Chief Medical Adhikari Dr. Theresa has said that Canada has 114,597 people with COVID-19 in the press conference. And the the Canadian has also been able to get COVID-19 in the past. The coronavirus has been able to get a million tests in the past. The day, Dr. Theresa has said that the province has been able to get a case tracing. Today, I would like to discuss the current epidemiology of COVID-19 in Canada and World Hepatitis Day. There have been 114,597 cases of COVID-19 in Canada, including 8,901 deaths. 87% of people have now recovered. Labs across Canada have tested over 3,863,000 people for COVID-19 to date. Over the past week, an average of over 40,600 people were tested daily, with 1% testing positive. Since last Friday, when I introduced the seven-day rolling average for Canada's daily case counts at 487 cases over the period July 15th to 21st, there has been a further increase to an average of 496 cases now being reported daily. As I have said, the upward trend in this indicator of COVID-19 activity is something that we must keep a very close eye on. Local public health authorities are doing their best to rapidly find cases and trace contacts to prevent further spread and investigate where transmission is occurring. Canadians can do their best by limiting their number of social contacts and maintaining physical distancing and hygienic practices that reduce the li likelihood of um, exposure and spreading the virus. Keeping our contact low ensures that if an exposure occurs, public health authorities will be able to manage the intensive work of testing and tracing to keep spread under control. If we overtax the public health resources and lose this ability to effectively test and trace, well, let's not go there. Switching gears a bit, I want to acknowledge that today is World Hepatitis Day. In Canada, I am pleased to see that rates of hepatitis B are declining. However, I am concerned about the increasing rates of hepatitis C. Despite recent advances in effective hepatitis C treatment, up to 246,000 people in Canada are living with chronic hepatitis C, and approximately 44% of them are unaware they are infected. Toronto the mayor John Tory ne dasya hai ki zyada tar log public health diya hadayatan di palana kar rahe ne te transit vich vi 95 faisadi log mask pa ke rakhde ne ate business adare vi indoor space vich mask pehnan nu yakeeni bana rahe ne mayor de mutabik jo vi advice ate measures jari kite gaye ne oh health adhikariyan di salah anusar hi jari kite jande ne ate mayor de mutabik bylaws kaim karan sambandhi sifarishan aaiyan ne ta jo map danda nu jari rakhya ja sake We've come so far thanks to the sacrifice and the patience of our residents and our businesses. The vast majority of people are doing the right thing and following public health advice. On the TTC, for example, we know from the latest survey of the system that 95 percent, 95 percent of the riders, the users of the TTC, were following the mandatory face covering rule last week. We also know that many businesses moved quickly to make sure that they were complying with the mandatory face covering bylaw in public indoor spaces, and that was what the bylaw covered. 
To help further fortify our city ahead of Stage 3, we will be bringing several measures to City Council this week to protect the health of our residents, to minimize the chances of new outbreaks, and all of that, of course, has meant and will continue to mean saving lives. And I'm delighted to be joined here today to address these, some of these measures that are going to be in front of City Council uh, with you uh, by the Deputy Mayor, Michael Thompson, who's the Chair of Economic Development, because a lot of this, of course, has an impact one way or another on business, and also by the Chair of the Board of Health, Councillor Joe Cressy, uh, again, where we've relied on the expert advice of some of the people that he works with uh, to help us to devise uh, these different uh, things that we're putting forward today. They're contained in a report that is being released today by the city staff, and they detail what further action the city itself can take to make sure we're encouraging people to do everything they can to stop the spread of the virus. I believe these measures, which have been fully recommended by our Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Davila, and Toronto Public Health itself, are all necessary in order to protect residents. The advice comes as it has throughout this pandemic from the medical and health professionals, not from politicians. And the advice with respect to these proposed additional measures is very simple. These measures will save lives and will help us to control the spread of COVID-19. As you know, discussions with the province are ongoing about some of these same health measures which would help to protect Torontonians as we move into stage three. We know the province is actively considering these and the discussions have been very constructive and very positive. But we also know that City Council is meeting this week and won't meet again until into the fall. And the City Council itself can take action in some, though not all, of these areas, as the report indicates. Hence the request made of the province by way of a letter we sent off last week. I know Premier Ford is just as concerned as I am, and as we all are, about a second wave and the disastrous impact that a return to a more stringent lockdown would have on the health of our residents and on the restart of the Ontario economy, the Toronto economy, and the Ontario economy. We've seen in other jurisdictions that further reopening can lead to increased outbreaks of COVID-19 and growing case count numbers, and we do not want to go in that direction. We charity nalo tawal nung kiti ge deal de mutabak is group ne na sirf Canada Student Service Grant Program ne pare chodo na si sago a contract rad hoon to pehla tartali sharia 5 million dollar vichyo 3 million dollar is charity di choli vi pehne san is bandhi federal sarkar te vi charity darmiyan hoye contract vich saaf nazar aunda hai ke 22 mai nu cabinet vallon is contract nu manjuri ditti gayi si house of commons di finance committee vallon is deal da verwa jari kita gaya 25 june nu sarkar ne is deal de sire chodan bare elan kita si par pradhan mantri justin टूटो के खिलाफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट के दोष लगने उपरांत 3 जुलाई को यह डील रद्द कर दी गई चैरिटी ने दसया है कि 30 जून को उन्होंने 30 मिलियन डॉलर हासिल हुए सन और जल्द ही सारे पैसे मोड़ दिए जाएंगे हाउस दी फाइनेंस कमेटी सरकार दे इस फैसले दा अध्ययन कर रही है फाइनेंस कमेटी वालों इस गल की भी पुष्टि की गई है कि प्रधानमंत्री टूडो तो उन्होंने चीफ ऑफ स्टाफ केटी टेलफोर्ड कमेटी सामने पेश होकर अपना पक्ष रखेंगे ब्रैमटन विखे वापरे गोलीकांड दौरान एक महिला की मौत हो गई है एक होर व्यक्ति गंभीर रूप में जख्मी हो गया है दोपहर ढाई बजे डियर पार्क क्रीसेंट के फेयरवैल एवेन्यू के नेे स्थित एक घर में एमरजेंसी अमले को सद्या गया पीर डिविजनल पुलिस कांस्टेबल कायल ए विलर्स ने दसिया है कि पुलिस ने एक लड़का तो लड़की जो कि अपने वीवियां में सन गोली लगन कारण जख्मी हालत में मिले हैं उन्होंने दसाया कि लड़की को तो मौके पर ही मृतक ऐलान दिया गया जबकि लड़के को जख्मी हालत में अस्पताल ले जाया गया है पत्रकारों के गलबात करद विलर्स ने कहा है कि दोवें ही एक दूजे को जानते सन तो भी मनिया जा रहा है कि दोवे नज ਕਿਸ ਮਨ ਸਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਕਿਸੇ ਹੋਰ ਮਸ਼ਕੂਕ ਦੀ ਭਾਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਨੇ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਸੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰਕ ਮੈਂਬਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਫੋਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਸ ਘਟਨਾ ਦੀ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਗਈ ਸੀ ਵਿਲਰਸ ਦੇ ਮੁਤਾਬਕ ਜ਼ਖਮੀ ਵਿਅਕਤੀ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਇਸ ਘਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਰਹਿੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਘਟਨਾ ਵਾਪਰੀ ਪਰ ਮਾਰੀ ਗਈ ਲੜਕੀ ਇਸ ਘਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਈ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਭ ਕਿਉਂ ਤੇ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਵਾਪਰਿਆ ਇਸ ਬਾਰੇ ਹੁਣੇ ਤੋਂ ਕਿਆਸ ਲਾਉਣਾ ਜਲਦਬਾਜ਼ੀ ਹੋਵੇਗੀ ਜਾਂਚਕਾਰਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੌਕੇ ਤੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਮਿਲਿਆ ब्रिटिश कोलंबिया की सरकार सूबे विचलिया खेड संस्थावों अपन सरगर्मिया जारी रखने के लिए एक इशारिया पांच मिलियन डालर प्रदान करेगी यह ऐलान करद बीसी के कला सैर सपाटा और सभ्याचार मंत्री लीजा बीयर ने कहा है कि कोविड नाइनटीन महामारी के कारण खेड संस्थावों रजिस्ट्रेशन फीस प्रोग्राम संबंधी रेवन्यू और स्पॉन्सरशिप न होने के कारण आर्थिक मुश्किलों का सामना करना पै रहा है उन्होंने कहा है कि सरकार वालों दी इस मदद न यह संस्थाव अपने बिलों आदि का भुगतान कर सकनगियां खिडारियों सरगर्म रखने के लिए प्रोग्राम उलीक 
ਸਕਣਗੀਆਂ ਜੇਕਰ ਜੋਗ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੀਸੀ ਵਿੱਚ 4100 ਲੋਕਲ ਖੇਡਾਂ ਸੰਸਥਾਵਾਂ ਰਜਿਸਟਰਡ ਨੇ ਲੀਜ਼ਾ ਬੀਅਰ ਨੇ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰਗਟਾਵਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੀਸੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਖੇਡ ਸੰਸਥਾਵਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੈਨੇਡਾ ਹੈਰੀਟੇਜ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਵੀ 3.4 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਦਾ ਨਿਵੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਭਵਨ ਸਰੀ ਵਿਖੇ ਵਿਕਟੋਰੀਆ ਦੇ ਉਬਰ ਦੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਕਵੀ ਮਸਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਾ ਪਲੇਠਾ ਕਾਵ ਸੰਗ੍ਰਹਿ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਅਥਰੂ ਲੋਕ ਅਰਪਣ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਪ੍ਰਸਿੱਧ ਸ਼ਾਇਰ ਕਵਿੰਦਰ ਚਾਂਦ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਸਵਾਗਤੀ ਸ਼ਬਦਾਂ ਉਪਰੰਤ ਮਸਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੀ ਕਵਤਾ ਬਾਰੇ ਸੰਖੇਪ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਅਤੇ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਅਥਰੂ ਪੁਸਤਕ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਇੱਕ ਨਜ਼ਮ ਵੀ ਸਰੋਤਿਆਂ ਨਾਲ ਸਾਂਝੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਮਸਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਕਵਤਾ ਲਿਖਣ ਅਤੇ ਇਸ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਤਾਬੀ ਰੂਪ ਦੇਣ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਭਵਨ ਦੇ ਬਾਨੀ ਸੁਖੀਵਾੜ ਦੀ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਪ੍ਰੇਰਨਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਨੇ ਪੁਸਤਕ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਕੁਝ ਕਵਤਾਵਾਂ ਵੀ ਪੇਸ਼ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਸੁਖੀਵਾੜ ਨੇ ਮਸਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੂੰ ਪੁਸਤਕ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰਕਾਸ਼ਨਾ ਅਤੇ ਮੁਬਾਰਕਬਾਦ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਤੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਭਵਨ ਦਾ ਮਕਸਦ ਹੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਾਂ ਬੋਲੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਸੱਭਿਆਚਾਰ ਅਤੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਫੁੱਲਤ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਭਵਨ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਨਵੇਂ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਲੇਖਕਾਂ ਲਈ ਹਰ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਸਰੋਤਿਆਂ ਅਤੇ ਵਿਕਟੋਰੀਆ ਤੋਂ ਆਏ ਮਹਿਮਾਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੂੰ ਤੂੰ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਜੇ ਸਮਝ ਆਈ ਤੈਨੂੰ ਦੱਸਾਂਗਾ ਆਪੇ ਨੀਵੀਆਂ ਪਾਰ ਨਿਕਲ ਜਾਓ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਾਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਟੁੱਟ ਜਾਓ ਰੱਸੀ ਫੁੱਲ ਫੁੱਲ ਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦਾ ਕੀ ਕਰੀਏ ਸ਼ਬਨਮ ਪੱਤੀਆਂ ਉੱਤੇ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੋ ਆ ਪ੍ਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਨ ਕਵਤਾਵਾਂ ਬੜਾ ਮਹੱਤਵਪੂਰਨ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਕਰੂੰਗਾ ਕਿ ਜਿੰਨਿਆਂ ਕੋਲ ਆਵੇ ਕਿਤਾਬ ਸੂਤ ਪੜਿਓ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਪੁਸਤਕ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਤੇ ਆਓ ਜੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੱਜਣ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆਏ ਹੋ ਸਾਰੇ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਭੁੱਲ ਗਿਆ ਬੜੇ ਪ੍ਰਸਿੱਧ ਨਾਮਵਰ ਗੀਤਕਾਰ ਜਸਵੀਰ ਗੁਣਾ ਚੌਰੀਆ ਆਏ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਪੁਸਤਕ ਸਮਾਰੋਹ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇੰਦਰ ਫੇਰ ਲੱਗਾ ਵੀ ਛਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਰਨਾ ਕੀ ਆ ਕਰਨਾ ਕੀ ਆ ਤੇ ਬੈਠਾ ਵੀ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਨੂੰ ਭਾਗੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਥੇ 10 ਸਾਲ ਤੱਕ ਨੂੰ ਆਇਆ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਜਾਣ ਲੱਗਾ ਵਾਸ ਕੇ ਇੱਥੇ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਭਾਗੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਜਦੋਂ ਗੱਲ ਹੋਈ ਤੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਾ ਵੀ ਕੁਝ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੋਲ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਜਾਣ ਲੱਗਾ ਭਾਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਿਹਦਾ ਕਹੂੰਗਾ ਵੀ ਮੈਂ ਗਲੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਦੋਹਾ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਗਲੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਦੋਹਾ ਸੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਚੱਕ ਕੇ ਕੰਦੀ ਲਾਇਆ ਮੈਂ ਗਲੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਦੋਹਾ ਸੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਚੱਕ ਕੇ ਕੰਦੀ ਲਾਇਆ ਭਲਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਇਸ ਮੁਰਸ਼ਦ ਦਾ ਜਿਨ ਸੋਕਾ ਪੱਲੇ ਵਾਇਆ ਭਲਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਇਸ ਮੁਰਸ਼ਦ ਦਾ ਜਿਨ ਸੋਕਾ ਪੱਲੇ ਵਾਇਆ ਮੱਸਿਆ ਹੁਣ ਅੱਗ ਚੁੱਲੇ ਦੀ ਬਣੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਕਬਰਾਂ ਚ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਸਿਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਕਬਰਾਂ ਚ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਸਿਆ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਵਾਟਸਐਪ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਕਰਦਾ ਹਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬੁੱਕ ਰਿਲੀਜ਼ ਕੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਗਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਹੁਣ ਦਿਖਦਾ ਹੋਰ ਹੌਸਲਾ ਜਾ ਪਿਆ ਮੈਂ ਕਿਤਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਲਾਉਂਗਾ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਜੱਟ ਦਾ ਗਿਆ ਸੋ ਮੈਂ ਤੋਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਟੀਮ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੁੜੀ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਸਾਡਾ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਤੋਂ ਬੰਦਾ ਮਕਸਦ ਹੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਾਂ ਬੋਲੀ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਸੱਭਿਆਚਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੀ ਵਿਰਾਸਤ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਫੁੱਲਤ ਕਰਨਾ ਤੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਨਵੇਂ ਲੇਖਕ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਪੁਰਾਣੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਬੁੱਕਾਂ ਲਿਖੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਮਾਲਾ ਦੀ ਬੜੀ ਕਦਰ ਕਰਦਾ ਪਰ ਜਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਕਿਤੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਜਾਤੀ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਆ ਜਾਏ ਕੋਈ ਨਵਾਂ ਸ਼ਾਇਰ ਕੋਈ ਨਵੀਂ ਬੁੱਕ ਛਾਪਣੀ ਚਾਹਦਾ
and everyone who's had a, a, a very busy uh, a school year that we've just concluded in June. Um, I also want to recognize today, and this is why we're making uh, today's announcement, that there are some who are feeling anxious about what uh, school might look like in September. Uh, this is why throughout the pandemic we've been working closely with teachers, parents, support workers, principals and vice principals, superintendents, trustees and indigenous rights holders uh, to ensure that health and safety in BC schools remain paramount. You'll recall that early in the pandemic, the Ministry of Education issued a five-stage approach that would allow in-class instruction to be adjusted depending on the risk of transmission and the direction that we received from public health authorities. During the March break, schools were in stage five, which featured the suspension of all in-class learning in British Columbia. After the March break, we moved to stage four, which meant that and allowed for 5,000 children of essential service workers who needed extra support in school to be accommodated uh, in the classroom. During this, families, we saw, uh, during this period, we saw uh, families and school communities really step up in heroic ways to provide essential services to our students. More than 75,000 meals were delivered each and every week to tens of thousands of families across the province. 23,000 technology devices and computers were loaned and arranged for students throughout the province to stay connected uh, as we move to online remote learning. In June, we were able to do something different. Because of British Columbia's collective efforts to flatten the curve, we moved to stage three, which was an optional voluntary return to class. And 200,000 students safely returned to school and attended mostly on a part-time basis schools right across British Columbia. As Minister Fleming has said, much work has been done in recent weeks to put those pieces together that will allow all students and teachers as much as possible to safely get back to in-class learning this September. This has not been an easy task and it has been something that has been front of mind since the very beginning of this pandemic. When we suspended in-class teaching, the very first thing we discussed was the need to get children back into those important learning environments as soon as we could safely. We have been working together on the plan since that time. It is a robust plan that I believe puts the health and safety of our children, teachers and staff at the top of our list of requirements. While we are still in the middle of school summer holidays, I know lots of people, families out there, students and staff are eager to get back to school this fall and I hear from many of you on an often daily basis. For students, being in class is about learning, about seeing friends, about getting those important emotional and social supports as well as an important education. Being back in school is also crucial for the many parents and families to be able to work and to be able to um, cope with dealing with this pandemic as a community. We know that schools can safely reopen if community transmission is low. And even though we've had an uptick in the last few weeks, we know that we have flattened the curve here in BC and we know we have what it takes to continue to keep our transmission rates low. And we've taken the measures that we needed to make sure that when we do see cases arise, we take, um, we adjust our requirements to stop the transmission in those particular places. And that is working. We're seeing that now. BC which bitte 24 ghante vich corona virus de 41 hor mamle samne aun de naal subah vich covid-19 de kul cases di ginti 3562 ho gayi hai BC di subahi sehat officer dr boni henry ate sehat mantri andrew dix ne press release de rahi eh jankari dinde dassya hai ki subah vich virus bandi motan di ginti 194 te 209 ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ 31 ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਹਾਈਡਰਾ ਗਵਾਈ ਇਲਾਕੇ ਵਿੱਚਲੇ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਆਊਟਬ੍ਰੇਕ ਵਿੱਚ ਪੀੜਤਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਵੀ
ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਰੋਨਾ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਦੇ ਕਾਰਨ ਮਰਨ ਵਾਲੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ 1.5 ਲੱਖ ਤੋਂ ਪਾਰ ਪਾਵ 1 ਲੱਖ 53848 ਹੋ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਕੋਰੋਨਾ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਨੇ ਪੂਰੀ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੀ ਲਪੇਟ ਵਿੱਚ ਲਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਤੇ ਇਸ ਦੀ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਮਾਰ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਹਾਮਾਰੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਬੁਰਾ ਰੂਪ ਲੈ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਤੱਕ ਪੀੜਤਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ 45 ਲੱਖ ਦਾ ਅੰਕੜਾ ਪਾਰ ਕਰਕੇ 45 ਲੱਖ 68875 ਹੋ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦਾ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਅਤੇ ਨਿਊਜਰਸੀ ਸੂਬਾ ਕਰੋਨਾ ਨਾਲ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਬੁਰੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵਿਤ ਹੈ ਸਿਰਫ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਕਰੋਨਾ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਦੇ 4 ਲੱਖ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਮਾਮਲਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਪੁਸ਼ਟੀ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ ਜਦਕਿ 32000 ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਮੌਤ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ ਨਿਊਜਰਸੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਹੁਣ ਤੱਕ ਕਰੋਨਾ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਦੇ 1 ਲੱਖ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਮਾਮਲੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਆਏ ਨੇ ਜਦਕਿ 15000 ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਨਾਲ ਮੌਤ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਹੈ ਅੱਜ ਦੇ ਨਾਰਥ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਸ ਇਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀ